Hello everyone, I am Squall Casting. This is Good as Gold number 46. Ward has been kind enough to let me just jump into the games and cast them for myself. So this is, of course, game three between Dragon Fury, the Orange Terran, with the sideways smiley face, and Kurosu, the purple Protoss. And I guess that's not really a sideways smiley face, because that'd be more like this, like that sideways. But, uh, a slanted smiley face. There we go. Both players are stressing a little bit, having a bonding moment as they discuss the stress of tournament play. So, yeah, this is the deciding game three. Whoever does win this match gets to go on to the grand finals. So, uh, best of luck to them both. So, in the first game, we did see Kurosu go for a Nexus first. Dragon Fury responded by placing a bunker just outside of the Nexus's vision range, tucked behind the minerals, and then made supply depots around the bunker so that way Zealots couldn't get in, and then just killed the Nexus and then won. <laughs> so it was pretty short. Um, it felt a lot like a TVZ, to be honest. Although I'd say more a TVZ from three months ago, because you, you don't really see bunker rushes working out anymore versus Zergs. And uh, it really seems like a lot of players have kind of moved away from that style of play. Um, but, um, yeah, so a little bit weird, but it worked out for Dragon Fury, so that was good. In game two, Kurosu got to, uh, just kind of macro up the way he wanted. Got a whole bunch of Colossi, attacked Dragon Fury's base, nearly killed him, but then kind of, you know, split up his army a little bit and ended up losing everything. But, uh, Dragon Fury just wasn't able to really macro up again after that, uh, you know, very damaging attack. And then Kurosu just made a second wave with, you know, like a, a billion immortals and then just crushed him. A bit of an age differential going on here. That's fantastic. 28 versus 16. So, uh, Kurosu, I guess, is a hipster from the, well, not the 70s, like they, well, not, no, he's not a hipster. I'm nearly as old as Kurosu. What am I even saying? I'm not a hipster. <laughs> Dragon Fury, though, very much the iPod, not iPod, iPad generation, I guess you'd say. The iPad, cell phone, um, I text about 300 times a day generation. Anyway, so Dragon Fury does find that probe, so we'll be able to drive that away. Kurosu may try to sneak that in again later, and the probe just kind of hanging out there does seem to be indicative to me that Kurosu wants to foregame. But uh, since it was found, it could be he's just going to head on home now and just play a little bit more standard instead. He is still only on one gas, and he is chrono boosting that warp gate and that stalker. So it could be he wants to do a little bit of early aggression. You know, send the zealot out first, have the stalker follow behind, and then hit with that uh, that nice little pairing that a lot of Protosses like to do. And Dragon Fury is expanding, so he's definitely in a bit of a vulnerable position. Um, hopefully he will find a bunker. Okay, going for two bunkers and then cancels. Okay, that could very well be a reaction to seeing all that Corona boost here on the Cybercore and only one gas. And wow, three bunkers. He's going to need to produce a few more Marines if he wants to populate all of those. And uh, Kurosu heading on out across the map. And okay, now he does have a proxy pile on down. Maybe not quite as close as he wants, but that will be a much shorter run distance than from all the way back here. And uh, Warp Gate gonna still be a little while before it finishes up. Uh, did the Stalker poke up there? Has he seen? He certainly sees now. <laughs> and he can't feel too fantastic about the Foregate at this point because Dragon Fury is very, very ready. Um, he only has five Marines, but three bunkers, that's a lot of defense. Um, now, the way Kurosu could win this is if he gets this one, well, you know, just goes all in, hardcore Foregate. You know, warps in a ton of zealots, some stalkers, and maybe one or two sentries. And zealots, you know, if they get wrapped around a bunker, they can kill it very fast. And uh, it'll come down to Dragon Fury being able to pull SCVs to repair. And right now, he doesn't really have any down there. He only has two that are building supply depots, which will plug the hole somewhat. But the zealots will still be able to get a ton of surface area on this bunker here. So we'll see if that works out. And oh, Kurosu double pile on here so we can warp in on the high ground. Uh, hasn't actually... Okay, he's warped in a few Stalkers. I would love to see him add more Zealots. His Zealots are more tanky, and they're kind of what you need to break through this, but 
Dragon Fury on the ball. Picks off on those pylons, and yeah, Crosi's going to go for it, but this is just not enough to break these bunkers. And yeah, there are SCVs there to repair. Does warp in a few zealots on the high ground, but it's not going to work. You know, only zealots versus bunkers. When there's this many SCVs repairing, it's not going to work out for you. I'm very sorry. And Kurosu decides to fall on back. Save those two stalkers. A very unfortunate situation for him. So uh, he's throwing up another gas at home. Hasn't instantly GG'd. But um, he is very, very far behind. And yeah, I would have loved to have seen him make a nexus rather than those four stalkers. You know, he absolutely needs to equalize economically. Looks like he's sending a probe down there to, to do just that. But now he's going to have to wait a bit to do it. And uh, if I were in his position, I would probably just throw down two nexuses. Like, just cut unit production for two, three minutes, get up to three bases as quickly as possible, and just pray that your opponent doesn't come for you. So, but it uh, looks like he's just going to go with the one nexus, so he will eventually catch up to Dragon Fury as far as economy goes, but it, it's going to take a really long time. And Dragon Fury is already gearing up for the late game. He's getting his two NG base down. He's getting a uh, factory there. So he's teching up. Kurosu on the other hand, still just on warp gate tech, and that is it. And he is now very supply blocked. And he's going to have to produce uh, two pylons if he wants to really produce anything again. Oh, the tooltip doesn't actually show how much supply it gives. I guess it's... Oh, it's eight supply? I think it's 8 supply. Okay, so he'll be able to warp in unit 1 unit. But that said, Dragon Fury knows Kurosu is very behind, and it looks like he's just going to go for it now. Kurosu does have a single sentry there, but this is way too wide for a single force field. And I think Dragon Fury is just going to be able to kind of walk over his opponent at this point. Um, it's microing decently. A single force field going down rather ineffectually, to be honest. Has killed off all the Zealots now, and now there's nothing to buffer damage for that sentry and those stalkers. And I think Kurosu is going to be forced to GG very shortly. Uh, looks like he wants to try just a little bit longer, but now his Nexus is finished, and uh, it's totally exposed. Um, if Kurosu gets some really, really good Stalker Maiko, he might be able to beat this back, or Dragon Fairy will just fall back. Interesting decision. I really feel like Dragon Fairy could have pushed out a little bit further, although that said, that's probably enough Stalkers now to deal with this many Marines that are all damaged and don't have Stim. So, yeah, I, I, okay, yeah, that was a good decision by Dragon Fury. <laughs> I mean, certainly you don't want to lose all those Marines for nothing. You know, he killed off some stuff, but then saw he didn't really have enough to continue pushing, so good call by him. I would have loved to have seen him at least try to, you know, slow down the probe transfer to the Nexus, but um, it might not have worked out. Stimulus Marines don't work out so great against this many Stalkers if your opponent has half-decent micro. And uh, Dragon Fury just moving up to three bases. Hasn't even taken down these rocks. Hopefully he does that at some point. And is walling this in with a barrack. So he's going hardcore bio, man. Nothing but bio units all day long. Nothing too unexpected. And uh, this is just such a ridiculous defense. Like, And oh no, it has the bunker even attacking the rocks. But um, yeah, like how do you break this without Colossi? And 80 zealots with sentries for force field. Like, I don't know, man. That's pretty solid. So, and, and I love that Dragon Fury kind of picked up on what was happening and then reacted accordingly. Um, I actually played a 1v1 the other day where I got 4-gated, and, like, I saw the signs. You know, I saw that he wasn't expanding. I saw that there was only one gas. And I was like, eh, I'll just expand. It'll be fine. I'll do 1-gate expand. And then he got, like, and he had a pile on the back of my base that I didn't check for. So I just got, like, completely murdered. And Dragon Fury, who's in gold, and I'm in diamond, reacted way better than me. <laughs> so go figure, eh? Just goes to show how very out of practice I am. Uh, if you are interested in seeing that, look for my Ladder Madness games. They are there, and oh, we have some lag. Kurosu, okay, good. Whew. Always a little bit scary when that happens. And uh, we got a single Marine moving out here. I'm not sure what this... Oh, he's probably taking the Watchtower. Who you want, Lan? Hey, man. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, yeah, so we do have a drop moving up here. I didn't notice it this time. Probably because it's not an enormous battle raging at Dragon Fury's base. But, um, as I was saying, if you are interested in watching me get absolutely bear-mauled 
in 1v1s. Check out my Ladder Madness games. There, um, there are three up now, and uh, I haven't won a single one. <laughs> and I'm going to be documenting the entirety of Season 8. The only thing that hasn't been documented is uh, my placement match. But everything else is being 100% documented. And uh, hopefully you will find it amusing watching me lose over and over again. But um, I'm doing it to improve, you know, and I'm doing it as random because I want to get more practice with all the races. And so I can get a, you know, a greater appreciation of how all the races work. As well as uh, losing that medevac, oh, as I was saying. As well as just, you know, being able to understand all the matchups better as a caster. So, um, yeah, anyway, getting back to this game... Crozier has um, recovered from this really, really well. He's up to three bases now, so matching Dragon Fury uh, is still way behind on economy. Holy crap, that's a big difference. Um, looks like Dragon Fury does have three mules down, so that's probably at least part of the reason. But, wow, that was more pronounced than I thought it would be. And you can see that Dragon Fury actually has a pretty healthy bank, and he's getting ravens. Yeah. Now, I don't know if he wants to move up to Seeker Missiles, or if he's going to use that for Point Defense Drone. I would guess Point Defense Drone, but Kroos has gone up to High Templar, so he is switching it up from last game. Storm is nearly done, and these Templar will have enough energy for Storms very shortly, and this will be very potent against this very Marine-heavy composition coming from Dragon Fury. And uh, I really hope Dragon Fury starts macroing better soon. Okay, he just had two barracks with Reactors finish up. So hopefully he starts utilizing those soon and starts spending some of those minerals because, you know, it's... Oh, another drop getting picked off. Wow, Krosu is all over that this game. Very nicely done by him, and he's starting to get triple upgrades. Wow, that is very cool to see. But, um, yeah, Dragon Fury really just kind of letting Krosu get back in this game. And uh, Krosu ahead on supply, so I'm a little bit worried for Dragon Fury. Hopefully he uh, rallies these barracks soon, because there's Marines popping out here, and they are doing literally nothing. There we go. Resets the rallies. That is excellent to see. Does he have any upgrades yet? He does have 1-1. One, 2-2 two, two is on the way, as well as Terran ship plating plus battle cruisers. Oh, yeah. We got a fusion core. I don't know if we will see the fusion core dance at some point, but that would be fantastic. I might actually, if that happens, well, actually, no, I probably can't pull that off, but I was saying I could go and try to find the Fusion Core Dance song that Day9 has played for us so many times, but um, that it would probably take a little bit too long, and then you'd just be scary, staring at the screen being stuck in one place for a long time. Although, I guess I could set it to someone else's cam. I could set it to Ord's cam, and then you could watch what Ord is doing. Tempting to do. Hmm, you know what? I'm going to do it. Hopefully I can find it. I'll just leave it on Orge Cam here now. And yes, Yamato Cannon is on the way. Where's the song? Did I delete it? I better not have deleted that link. Um, I remember what it was called. It was called Learning the Ropes by uh, Ludic. Here we go. Oh, it is a YouTube video. Uh, no, that one doesn't work. Here we go. Oh, you heard that for half a second? I'm going to have to turn it down so it doesn't completely drown out my voice. Hopefully that works. I'll turn off the game sound. Oh, yeah. Fusion Core Dance. Unfortunately, it's nearly done, so I won't get to do this for too long. And I feel like that's probably still a little bit too loud. I'll turn that down a bit. And uh, I'll just let the song play out because it's that fantastic. We've got a drop here, guys. Oh, man. Well, this. Wonderful music plays in the background. There are people dying. And ancient beings getting blasted to smithereens. Resurrected beings, no less. I'm pretty sure stalkers are, um... I just know why they aren't. Those were dragoons. Dragoons are like the dead souls of zealots brought back. Or something like that. Dragoons were, of course, from Starcraft 1. But, um, no. Stalkers, uh... Stalkers are alive. I think stalkers that die become Dark Templar or something like that. Anyways... This song is so good. And uh, Dragon Fury is still just trying to drop everywhere. But uh, it just really hasn't gotten him all that much traction yet. So uh, hopefully he backs off from that at some point. Just actually just builds up a Doom army and then pushes. Uh, he has taken a hidden expo here, which is awesome. And 
so we'll see if Kurosu picks up on that at some point. I really hope this music isn't too loud. Like, I'm worried that you guys will just be completely unable to hear what I'm saying. I may have to do a little bit of stuff to the uh, video in post-production to ensure that does not occur. And look at how many battle cruisers he's making. Three battle cruisers and a raven. And I see what he's doing with these ravens now. He's getting the ravens so that way he can put down the point defense drones. And the stalkers just won't be able to hit the battle cruisers. That's pretty cool. And uh, I'm actually going to link this YouTube video in the description because it's literally a picture of the fusion core. And next to it is the day nine text. And it says, do the fusion core dance. And then the dance word is like all wavy, like it's dancing. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Kurosu is moving on out now. Don't know if he's going to check for expansions or whatnot. Um, yeah, this music is probably way too loud, isn't it? I'm going to have to see if I can dial it. <laughs> Anyways, looks like he wants to push. Um, he is now behind on supply, and these battle cruisers are going to be pretty beefy. Here we go. Point defense drone intercepting so many shots, getting used up almost instantly. And the matter cannons going down with the Archons. Very good choice. Archons have so much health, and even more PDDs going down and getting used up almost instantaneously. And I think Dragon Fury's definitely got this battle made. Crosu is splitting up his forces, which is a bad decision. And Stalkers alone versus Stim Marines that are on 2 2 plus battle cruisers in the air shooting down on you. That's not gonna work out so great for you. And uh, yeah, Kuros would just continue with these 3 3 upgrades, or 3 Forge upgrades, I should say, which is pretty awesome. And uh, Dragon Fury still just getting, uh, I guess he's prioritizing ship armor over weapons. I don't know if I agree with that. Like, I feel like, uh, yes, Valkyries are, are beefy, but they have so much health that personally I prefer just seeing get them get the attack upgrade because they shoot so ridiculously fast. Like, look at that, 0.23. Nothing in the game shoots that fast. Not even stimmed Marines, man. Anyway, Kuros, you're definitely going to lose this base. Very unfortunate. I definitely feel like he is on the back foot now. He is trying to get Void Rays out now, and I sort of like the idea of that, and that Void Rays are really good against bow cruisers. But uh, not going to work out with that Marine support. There we go, we got the GG with the slant and smiley face. That is fantastic. I do love seeing the players be um, manner to each other. So thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed the Fusion Core dance song, which was only active for about 10% of the Fusion Core research. But, um, yeah, so that was enjoyable. I will see you guys later.